to be honest, it's not easy. It's not always easy. And uh, there are several, in my experience, I had like several types of uh, dynamics that came out of this. Now, to be honest, if it happens again and again, then probably personally is not the right environment for me to continue to work on because I want to work in a, in a company that is based on facts, is based on the right proper roadmap. And uh, as an example, like as I was mentioning before, like all those commitments and bespoke things that we're doing for customers, just saying yes to the one that was screaming the most and then having an escalation. Like that was not the way to go forward from my perspective. So you need to, of course, try to bring in a journey, product uh, strategy, explaining things, as Chris was mentioning, communication, transparency, showing why this is bringing you the money, the revenues or whatever you need to achieve the goals. And to be honest, like if at some point it doesn't work and uh, it goes back to the old habits, uh, I, I would personally change. Well, one, one other thing I'd love to add about that is that, um, you know, I think one of the things that's really valuable, uh, especially working with very senior leaders, is that they sometimes have kind of additional context that you may not have access to. And so it doesn't necessarily mean that they're just at a whim asking you for something all the time. I mean, they are sometimes. Um, and I'll talk about that in a second. But I do think trying to contextualize what, why this is a problem or what is the team or the evidence that's like coming up. And, and so I think you, the way you can handle those types of things, there's usually like power dynamics at play in these types of situations too, where, you know, trying to understand what the thing is, asking follow-up questions, asking people that we should be talking to about this thing. I think you always wanna to try to limit the number of these things that you take on. But I think at least at that point, if you can contextualize it in some way to your work, um, you're more, easily able to kind of say, how does this fit into the framework rather than it just being like a, a, a thing that distracts the team. And then I would also kind of say that um, Derek Sivers has this really great post about two cents where whenever a senior leader kind of gives their just like two cents in a meeting, a lot of people then just like jump and try to now like deal with it in some way. Um, when the reality is it could have just been a throwaway comment. And so I think the other thing about this too is that once you contextualize these things, I think what you'll find is that some of the time if you're like, hey, you know, we, we looked at this feature, it doesn't seem ideal for our main like per persona or job to be done. It doesn't seem to meet our prioritization criteria, but I wanna let you know that like I've looked into this and we're following up. It's not something we're gonna take on right now. I think people, like some of the time when it is that kind of two cent throwaway comment, we end up spinning up so much work for things that may not actually be that valuable for people. So I think those are some other things to kind of think about when we talk about this. But I mean, that, out of the four things that I do whenever I'm working somewhere, it's either do the best job you can, um, it's check the box and make sure you make it easy for other people to check the box. The third thing is to actively subvert uh, and build shadow systems. And then the fourth one is always walk away. So I think those are those are four good options to think about when dealing with this. I would add also that, um, like you said, it could be, a, uh, like Chris said, it's, it could be a throwaway to get confirmation from an ally in the room on what was said and just, uh, did you hear the same thing that the other person here? And then, and then go in and dig in on the why and the intentionality behind that, behind the, uh, the comments, so.